All right, there we is, there we is, there we is. Continue right. the conversation, my guy. Yeah, man. I'm just saying, like, it's just too much. It's clowns get too many passes nowadays in the game, man. It's like, like because the average fan aren't really heads, if that makes sense. You no. know what I'm saying? Like it's like the the crossover between the hip hop culture and the music industry, the pop side of the hip hop music industry is kind of like it, it it merged in a way where it's nasty you know what i'm saying there ain't no real there's no there's no real difference anymore it's like you know it you know what the difference is if you if you come from an era and you know what it looked like prior to this shit but this is almost congealed now this is almost like over it, the overlap is too nasty now you know what i'm saying that's why you had niggas like like Drake being able to do the shit that he does to these artists that that want to get on, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause you know, you know, we do underground shit. We know what that shit look like. We know it's a hustle. We know it's a grind. I don't, I don't want to be a, a broke artist. You know what I'm saying? But the question would be, to what end am I willing to sacrifice my art to get on? And what does that look like? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What is it like? We got plenty of examples of what that looked like. You know what I'm saying? Right. Eventually, if, if you that desperate to get on, a motherfucker is going to take your shit and run with it. And in the process, and I'm not speaking on nobody in particular, but in the process, are you going to say something about a certain artist being hot right. at the top of the game and him taking your shit? Or are you going to just shut up and, and, and eat the bowl of shit in front of you and continue to grind? But the only part about that that I don't like is that why are you getting paid the amount of money that I should be getting paid for some shit that I created? And all you did was 16 bars. You did 16 bars. I had someone come in and produce a track unless I produced the track myself. I engineered it. I mixed and mastered it. And then you went and go, you went and put out some shit that was mine. Also, bro, it's like, um, like a lot of people who get on and they got a team. Just imagine like they whole team is like really count. Like it's me and you. We have a team of 16 people behind us, management, mm -hmm. uh, producers, uh, people who help direct the course of our, you know what I'm saying, our path or whatever, and actually get us linked up with a with a a, a triple A artist who can actually get on and make that make our hit single bigger. Let's say that happens, right? And that that artist were like, all right, um, Otha, this song hard, but you gotta take six off of it for him to get on it. Now the the team. We feed, we got a lot of mouths to feed. You know what I'm saying? The team is really dependent on us. And the sacrifice might not be that bad if we got more in the tuck. But a lot of artists don't have more in the tuck and more opportunities to play. You know what I'm saying? They don't have more cards to play. So like they might have maybe like five singles, but five singles really ain't enough when you finna gamble on one single, one of that five. You know what, yeah. what I'm saying? So you finna gamble away. Like you, like I would, if you say a hey, uh, six, uh, I can't even think of an artist who would want to, like Benny the Butcher want to hop on the song with Otha. You know what I'm saying? But Six got to hop off of it. If we got fucking 20 of those, I want to say 20, 12 of those already in the bag, I'll hop off of that one and let you go ahead and rip that one up. Go ahead, get that check. We we all going to eat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if Benny be like, you got to take him off and uh, I'm going to put it out myself, that changes everything. That changes everything because... Why am I taking you off of a song that belongs to me or belongs to us for right. him to jump on it and then for him to put it out on his own? It ain't your shit. Like you're jumping on my record. But in, in, in these cases nowadays, that's how it happens, right? They'll say, oh, well, I'm going to jump on it and I'm going to put it out, you know, irregardless of, of what the circumstances may be. Because it's going to make you look bad if you say something, right? Mm -hmm. That's a whole that's a whole situation with, uh, what's the young boy name uh, uh, that did the reference tracks? Oh, you're talking about Quentin Miller. Right? So now everybody wants to say Quentin Miller is a bad person for, for, for saying that he had the reference tracks. There are other ghost writers and other artists that have reference tracks. It just so happens that his came out because he said something. And maybe he said something because he got tired of being a guy in the background that didn't that wasn't getting paid. I, I don't know that situation. For anybody that's listening, I don't right, know right. what happened. He got dragged into it because Meek Mill Eric Drake out on it. Think about how, think about the, the ripple effect. That's how big, and that's how much gravity Drake has as an artist. You know what I'm saying? That shows yeah. you how much gravity he has. Like, that's like, he's like, um, he's like Neptune. 
You know what I'm saying? He's like, he's like that. That he he has so much gravity in the game that anything that goes against him can throw your trajectory off. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like even Meek, Meek already had his wave. He had, Meek has not been the same since. His career has not been the same since. Where he should be right now, it's almost like being like when a nigga get locked in jail. Like, and I'm saying like, not, I'm not saying metaphorically. I'm saying like when a nigga get sat the fuck down, and he was on his way to the top. Yeah, he was already headed in that direction. You know what I'm saying? He had he had the wave. He had the he had the fans behind him. And then he went to literal jail. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like everything started start rippling against him. Uh, the Quentin Miller thing, Quentin could have just stayed in the background and not said anything, but he probably saw it as an opportunity to kind of clear the air because his name was dragged in the midst of this shit. And that was like a card he played that he probably shouldn't have played. But by the same token, should he not really played it if he was the nigga that was kind of like providing the in that situation, I wouldn't have played the card, right? Because I'm not the person that said something. I didn't say it. You didn't hear it from my mouth. Another motherfucker spoke on it. I ain't got nothing against neither one of these dudes. Nope. I have nothing against Drake or nothing against Meek Mill or Quentin Miller. But the thing about it was another nigga spoke out and said what you were doing. That speaks to the level of, to me, insecurity jealousy or whatever may be in that that man's mind to speak right. on quentin miller and what he does for drake you shouldn't have spoke on that and then for quentin miller he should have just fell back like yo i don't i don't have nothing to do with that you know i work with drake uh i'm an in-house producer or i make tracks or whatever it is i'm a cool you know what i'm saying I, I fuck with him uh i don't know what this is about maybe this shit will blow over <laughs> i don't know yep. what it, get right back to work Yep, he should have took the path of, of, of no resistance. I'm not going to take either side. I'm, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing because... Sahai continued. He continues to write for Ye. He conti- you know what I'm saying? He continued. Sahai, he put out his music. He don't get caught up in none of the bullshit. If motherfuckers ask him, he, don't, he ain't going to lie about it. His name is on the credits. That's the difference. Yeah, and, and when you... The way Meek did it was just like... Bro, you already got shit going on. Why would you throw somebody else's name into the fire? Yep. And you're not of this era. You're not even a top guy. It ain't like it was Jay-Z versus Nas. Nas been chilling out for a while, and he come back and he dropped Ether. And he allegedly, supposedly body hove on that song. But all you had to do was just focus on, focus on what you was doing. But the man, Drake, came out with some heat. Is it a world tour or your girl's tour? When I was listening to that, I was like, oh, you can't even, if you can't come back from that, bro. It wasn't, to me, that was, the only thing about it was the song had, a, the song had uh, mass appeal because yes. it had pop singles, you know what I'm saying, gravity to it. It wasn't a great song. No, but it was a diss record. It just turned into a great song. Yeah, it was a diss record that had the right vibe. And that's what and you can't if you can't swim against that current, get the fuck out the water, bro. Facts, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And Meek, his battle, his battle background was not enough to help him because and because Drake didn't approach it like a battle rapper. He talked his shit, but he approached it like a nigga who make hits. You know what I'm saying? That's like that's cannabis versus LL Cool J. LL Cool J is not a great rapper at all. If you take if you take the the lyrical dexterity of cannabis versus LL Cool J. Cannabis wins that every fucking time. Every time. But when you talk about like machine, machine, yeah, you talk about the like. It's too many people who invested in Drake. It's too many people who was invested in LL. Ain't nobody. They not finna for this new nigga. They Leo finna, Cohen said it himself. LL Cool J better not fucking lose this battle. I need everything on deck. I need all hands on deck for LL to make sure that he wins this wins this battle. And it wasn't even a matter of lyricism. It was more so of the situation of if he responds or don't respond, just move him out the way. Move That's cannabis what, out the I way. I believe that LL has writers. I always felt like LL had writers, bro. I felt like once I learned that, uh, once I, p- I paid attention and I learned the difference between uh, walking with a panther and mama said, knock you out. I was like, that nigga had writers because there's no way you create a whole different album sound between walking with a panther and 14 shots of the dawn and you put out fucking mama said knock you out and that's your biggest smash album mm. 
between the two most trash albums you ever created? Like, and he worked with Marley Marl and you know what I'm saying? Like, no, bro, there's no fucking way. But when you got the machine behind you, you know what I'm saying? Because I think also it's like we had we we function in this industry on the underground and on the mainstream and hip hop where we have this that these rules is these rules that have that exist in hip hop that don't exist nowhere else in the industry. You know what I'm saying? In terms of like uh, keeping it real. You know what I'm saying? Keeping it real. You talk, we, we short sight ourselves though a lot. And then we let the industry do it. We we look at like uh like I know my abilities as a rapper. I know my abilities as a writer, I know my abilities as a producer. Uh me teaming up with you and Smith to me was a smart decision because you guys add something to to the recipe that I myself can't provide, if that makes any sense. You know what I'm saying? Like you hear something. You hear something in a beat that I don't hear. So therefore, songs are made from beats that I probably wouldn't even thought of making a song to. Or you might hear a different direction. This is very true for ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening, this is true. And because I'm I'm cognizant of that, I'm able to have a, a have some uh have a little bit more creative uh dexterity. I'm I'm more a little bit more flexible in my creative creativity because i'm i'm willing i'm open to accepting the fact that i don't get it all the time you see what i'm saying you don't and there are a few songs and it's, it's no knock or anything it's just the truth there are songs that there are beats that you've made that you was like i would have never thought of that or i would have never thought of that that the way that i did those songs you was like i that was not supposed to come out like that right and that's just because i'm you know saying i'm a producer and a writer so mm -hmm. it's one of those things where like if I was only a writer and I'm not really a part of the creative process when it comes to like actually making beats, then it would kind of, I wouldn't have a preconceived idea of how I want this song to turn out. You see what I'm saying? So if I'm the one making the beat, I'm making the beat and I'm rapping in my head. You see what I'm saying? So I'm, uh -huh. I'm, uh -huh. so I'm like structuring this beat. I'm just bobbing my head and bars just I'm saying in and out of my head is coming up with these different lines because that helps me figure out how to break down should go, how to structure this beat. Cause I'm hearing like, even if it ain't even words, it's like the cadence or something like that. I'm thinking of all of these different things while I'm structuring this beat. So when I present what I've created and you hear it and you come from a different angle, I'm like, Oh damn, I ain't think about it like that. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Because I, I, I can't, it's just not possible. I'm already like, I'm already using my brain in all these different ways to even be this creative. And for me, like I told you, when you asked me, what do you hear when you hear the hear the beat? I said, I just go wherever the beat tells me to. By the time I, I've heard the hook or the 16 bars, right. I'm letting that talk to me unless I have some subject matter that I feel like fits that particular beat at the time. So right. for me, it's just like, all right, cool. Well, I need a beat that does this. And then when I'm sitting there with the with my pad open and I don't hear it, I flip to the one that makes more logical sense for me to that beat. And if it's nothing, then I just go, all right, well, let me just sit there. Let me sit here and listen to what he had, what he created. And I can go from there. And then you get the songs like the Shattered Dreams. You get the uh, all, all the other different songs. You get the prepares and everything else that come out of those uh, songs. Mm -hmm. I Came Home and everything else. Um they just come out that way because there was no I came home had directive like I knew what I wanted to do when I did that that was me telling Smith hey can you put this in here can you put that in here you see that's what put you two at an advantage though people think that being a rapper who makes beats puts you at an advantage because you get to rap over your own beats right but that only works if I'm only willing to just do it by myself and, it, and who's to say it actually works but for you guys, it's a collaborative effort because he's creating, he can create beats and you can vibe to what he creates and you can write whatever you want to write. Or you guys can like, you can present samples to him. Like, hey, you think you can flip this for me? I want this type of vibe. And he can like shoot you some different sketch pad shit until you kind of come to some sort of consensus. You know what I'm saying? So there, cause Tony don't rap and you don't make beats. No, and, but he's done it already, though, just so people have an understanding. Like, that's how some of these songs have come, up, have come together. And you, when we, you know what I'm saying, you sat down with me and I made beats on the spot. You know what I'm saying? And we built from there. And those beats come out completely different than stuff that I make for myself. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm vibing with somebody and I'm taking input live in real time. You know what I'm saying? And we're kind of like, I still do the same process, bars going on in my head, but now I'm hearing you, you know what I'm saying? And what your thoughts are and it's helping influence the outcome. So that's, those are the things that kind of make that a little different when I'm just doing it solo and I'm rocking out and I'm just doing whatever I feel like it's like, um, uh, I guess it's serving the need of like scratching that creative itch. It's not mm-hmm. necessarily a need for me to create like a, a whole album out of these beats. I'm just, I, I need to get this outlet. I, I'm putting these beats out here and yeah. you know, doing it because I need to do it. And then I'll just present what I got if I feel like it's a, if I feel like it's really something that can potentially go in a good direction, you know what I'm saying? It's never been me saying, excuse me. It's never been me saying, Oh, I need credit for that beat. I need to be a co-producer of or anything like that. You definitely deserve co-producer credits on some shit. But, but it's never been that way. It's just like, look, Hey, add this on here to make the song go more in the direction that I'm, I'm aiming for. It'll, it'll sound more like this. And it'll add creativity to the song if it goes this way. You know what I mean? It's never been me just sitting there going, oh, I I should be, I, I help produce. Like, no, like, yeah, I did the work. All I did was give my input on the song that we were that you, that we were creating. But all that other shit, man, yeah, yeah I can have that. Like, all, all I want to do is, all I want to do is make sure that good music comes out of anything that we're doing. That's it. End of the day. End of the day, bro. I mean, Ever so often we kind of like, and this is with any creative, I already know, I, I you know, so had these conversations, I watch your work, my, my homeboy Prism, we we talked about collaborating on some shit, he make beats, I was like, shit, let's kind of, we got the same equipment, so I'm like, hey, let's see what we can, I, I'll send you some shit, some stems, and you can see if you can flip what I got, and we're going to try to like collaborate. This is like a process that we, you know what I'm saying, we, it's no different than us trading bars. We're like, we kind of, we want to kind of like, expand our abilities we want to see what we what our limits are and see if we can break those boundaries mm-hmm. because it's just a creative thing if we were fucking painters if i was a if i was a a a, a painter that used canvas and, and acrylics and you use krylon there's there's potential to collaborate there you see what i'm saying if you want to if you want to fucking bomb walls and you have a technique that you use, but you see a technique that I use on canvas, we'll figure out a way to make those ty- types of worlds come together and converse because they're still in the same visual arts field. And it's no different than us rapping. Like I have a, I think I have a different flow and a different cadence than you, but when they come to, when we come together, we make some dope shit. And that's what make it more entertaining because if you think about like Outkast, out, uh, Big Boy and Andre, two completely different styles of rap. Yes. Yes. But they complement each other so well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, ha- they even come from two different areas in the mind when it comes to, like, constructing their songs. But their songs made sense. Yeah, and that's right. So, like, when you have a situation going back to, like, the Meek and Drake thing, it's like the convenience factor of, like, having Drake on the song is the only thing they're looking for. They're not even looking for a cohesion. They're just looking for the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Drake going to blow me up. Or Drake gonna make this, you know what I'm saying, possible for me until the shit don't happen. And be like, uh, McConan, you know what I'm saying? You're going up on a Tuesday and falling off on a Wednesday. Mm. You know I mean? Yeah, I just thought it was just crazy that the way that that whole thing transpired, it was almost like you opened this door for warfare, verbal, lyrical warfare. You open a door, you walk through it. And then the first couple shots that hit you, you you kind of like just backed off. Couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle it. He walked in and he came in with his Draco and this nigga had a whole fucking Barrett, a 50 caliper Barrett. Yeah. <laughs> the nigga busting shots with a with a fucking anti- Gatling gun and everything. Anti-aircraft weapon and shit. <laughs> you know what like I'm he walked through the door and was met with this assault of, of weaponry and you had no real, real response. It wasn't even the bars, bro. It was just the 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 level of the song. You know what I'm saying? Like that back to back would ring out in a club right now. It would, but the fact that like the way he pinned his bars together was was bad, and it was just like a bunch of and and it's not look okay. So I'm gonna say it like this: It just sound like a nigga was 
was dry snitching throughout the course of his song. Like, you naming Quentin Miller and all this other shit, like, yada, yeah. yada, yada. Like, he thought he was going to embarrass him. He didn't realize that Drake fans is a different breed of fan. He thought that Drake fans was rap fans. You see what I'm saying? Drake fans are Drake fans. They don't give a fuck about hip hop. They don't give a fuck about rap. They care about- They care about songs, vibes. You know what I'm saying? Like Drake fans ain't Kanye fans. They it's some overlap there. You know what I'm saying? But like people who fuck with Kanye don't fuck with Kanye because it's bars. Nobody said, man, Kanye probably the most prolific lyricist there is in the game. And yeah. he made, no, he's a he's a musician. He's an artist. People look at him and they accept the fact that hey, this nigga ain't write this shit. But guess what? This shit rang off. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with Ye. You know what I'm saying? Certain albums, certain songs, people may not fuck with, but people get it. And when you when you transcend like the basic boundaries, like Drake and Kanye and Jay, they and Wayne, they transcend the basic construct of what most rap fans who are like hardcore. That's why, man, so much to it, dude. It's like when you when you get to that certain level and you. And those the, the boundaries of you know saying they they are outside of the the yeah. atmosphere of rap. Yeah, once you be once you hit that level where you can consistently grab the right beat and put your cadence to it and talk about what you're talking about, you've ascended into a level where people don't understand what lyricism is no more. Like they don't get that. Don't the, care. The, the pop culture, the American public, the little white kids from whatever town, they don't they don't understand what the rap shit is no more. Right. That, that, that doesn't even matter to them. What right. matters is that you say something that sounds cool over this dope ass track. And they friends fuck with it too. And that's it. You know and that's it. Like they don't care about anything else. They don't care about substance. They don't care about lyricism at that point. Because and if they did, you'd be looking at a, a lot of other rappers. J. Cole would be a lot higher than what he is. I would even venture to say like, that's probably why Kendrick hasn't been so quick to just drop music. Cause he's still trying to maintain his creativity. He's still trying to maintain, and he's been able to be, he's been able to be successful because he's still kind of like maintaining his creativity. Did he reach pop star status? Hell yeah, he reached pop star status, but he did it in a way where it didn't necessarily, he didn't compromise the the idea the idea of who, what his identity is you his integrity saying? his integrity and then on top of that he backed away from the table like i don't want to eat like that i don't want to eat like that exactly so it's almost like his consistency is always maintained strictly by his distance you know what i'm saying because after a while you know it was what a couple albums in a row and then he kind of he kind of backed off like ah, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that like i, I i'm gonna go into the background and fade out and let y'all go back to what y'all was doing too much of me is not is enough for me. And like the mystique build up, you know what I'm saying? That's what that's what that's what Marshall does, man. Eminem does that. Marshall, his name alone has gravity. He, he don't, I don't honestly, I don't even know this dude, but I feel like I can identify with the idea. Meaning that uh he knows it's like it's not lost on him where he exists in the realm of pop star. You dig know what I'm saying? And because he doesn't want to feed that monster, he doesn't get involved. You don't see him on red carpets and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't see him on TMZ or or the shade room and no shit like that. He drop an album. He does some rapidy rap shit. He'd be focused on what his style and and, and and whatever that looks like is, and he backs off again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. like I I'm sitting, like I was surprised nothing dropped from him last year. I'm like shit. 2021 came and went. No M. Okay. You do know what I'm saying? Because you think about it, like everybody that does do it, and they and they do it consistently and they do it effectively. It's a rare breed, bro. It is, but in this new era, like I think that's one of the ways to to me to get lost in a shuffle, unless you got something that's that's game changing and. From the last couple of albums that M has put out, and there's no, it's no disrespect to what he's putting out, but it's just like a lot of rapidy rap, like you said, there's a lot of syllables. Like I think people right now they're in a position where everything is weird for everyone, so they need to hear something that's that hits home. It's just like ah, all right, I resonate that that music or that sound or that particular project resonates with me because I understand what that is and. 
there's not a lot there's not a lot of that out there so it's kind of hard for but it's, i wouldn't say it's kind of hard i would think that it would be a challenge to put something out in Eminem's from Eminem's corner when he's had so much success like what do you what, what what does he talk about right now yeah exactly and that's and see that's i think that's what what the situation was with Kendrick I feel like because you know he he his deal he let his deal with TDE run out you know what I'm saying so he's like pretty much a free agent or whatever at this stage. Uh, what does he talk about? How does yeah. he? How does, you know what I'm saying? Like we he's probably sitting up here watching his 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 favorite rappers try it try their hand at it and and like they're not failures but like in, in measure of like in the scope of what it is their capabilities are they're failing. You know what I'm saying? J. Cole put out a dope album last year, but did it really hit? You know what I'm saying? Drake put out a, a R8 album, but did it really hit? Ye put out a pretty dope, I fuck with Ye album, but did it hit? You see what I'm saying? I haven't even heard like, Ye's album yet. I, I fuck with it, bro. I fuck with it. It's different. It's different. Um, Especially like the deluxe edition that came out. It got the song with Andre on there and shit like that. Uh, but it's like one of them things like when you really want when you really look at the scale and the scope of what's happening in the industry right now it's like you have to ask yourself like unless you're like where we exist in the game you know what i'm saying on you know it's like we're on the outskirts pr pretty much kind of viewing the you know so we get we have a good view of it you know what i'm saying i'm i'm not too far removed from like people who actually are movers and shakers but just viewing it i'm looking at it from like i'm glad that level of, of uh, potential destruction to my career doesn't exist over here. I can just be as creative as I want to be. I can be as I can be as passive as I want to be. I don't have the pressures. I can put out music. I get the the pro the proper level of response for each project or each song according to whatever it whatever result I'm looking for. You yeah. too. Yeah. You too. You know what I'm saying? Like we not we not under no pressure. We not under the gun. The microscope is crazy when you have like because hip hop, like I said, it it crossed over into the pop market so much that it's almost a mesh. So when you had that that type of mesh happening, you have a situation that uh your creativity gets gets shrouded and like uh you can't you can't be as creative as you think you want to be and get the same reception as you would from your original fan base, because the new fans, the people that actually cut the checks, the people that provide the checks, the, the the lifestyle, the people that help build your brand, they don't care about how dope you can be. All mm -hmm. they care about is how dope your songs are at that moment. Th their main focus is the financial gain of what it is that you're doing currently. They don't care about, like you said, the artistry, the wordplay, the lyrics, the verbal, the verbal, whatever it is. Why you ain't got a, why you don't got a Bentley? Why you ain't, you know what I'm saying? Why you don't got no Bugatti? Why you, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Why you ain't flexing? I like it when you flex. We will grill that nigga. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. That's what these yeah. fans for now. They want like it's the comparison. That's and I think Drake is the one that straddles that fence more than anybody. He wants to, he that's why he hops on these singles with these new artists and shit like that. And he aligns himself with these artists that just that just do their thing. Mm -hmm. Versus because he old enough to be big brother to a lot of these niggas, but he acting like he right there with them. You know what I'm saying? Do you think that's just that just comes from not knowing where his where his place is, or I think that he is at this stage is just maintaining his stride. It has I think he don't care. It don't matter to him no more. He's gonna cut like he he has the same momentum and gravity as uh, as Ye and and, and Ho. You know what I'm saying, but in, for his in that case, then why not just step back? Just step back. Let the game. Let the game be the game. That just happened the way it's supposed to happen. His ego is different. You know what I'm saying. He don't have the same. He don't. What he what he is not is a 40 plus 50 year old. You know what I'm saying. He's not. He's not up there in age yet. So he can still kind of like party with these young niggas. He can still kind of fit into them crowds. Yay! Yay! Is 45 years old. He's He's like five months younger than me or something like that. So he's 44, be 45 or something like that. And he don't, you know what I'm saying? The way he moved for a nigga his age is already kind of, in my opinion, is kind of like off-putting, but he ain't doing the shit that Drake does in that same vein. Drake can, you'll see Drake with niggas I, with, with, three, with three letters before their name. 
like like a fucking gamer tag, YK Osiris or LBG Oscar or whatever the fuck these kids' names is nowadays. You know what I'm saying? And he be on yeah. they shit because Drake wants to maintain relevance in a, on on terms of keeping, I guess, uh, keeping those checks coming in in a consistent way. I, I'm maybe I'm thinking maybe he got like his team scouting out like the hot singles on SoundCloud or some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Drake is not personally just going out here scouting out these songs. He got niggas on his team just coming back with these singles, these artists that they hearing or they watching people's trending favorite songs and they're like listening to it like, Drake could probably fit this song. Hey, Drizzy, you want to get on this? Hey, Aubrey, you want to get on this? What you think about this song? You know what I'm saying? And then he sit up and vibe to it and he tell them, hey, see if you can make this happen. You see what I'm saying? And then that'll extend out his momentum. You know what I'm saying? It'll help kind of like, especially because it's dry out here right now. You saw yeah. what 2020 looked like. You saw what 2021 looked like. You know what I'm saying? So it's dry out here. So niggas really ain't eating like they should be off of their music like they once was. Streaming is good because niggas don't got to go outside and listen to music. They could just pick an app and just play some shit. But yeah. it's not the same because they're not eating like they normally would. Like you don't get the same money off of streams as you would if, if a ticket sells. No, one stream is you have to have twelve hundred streams for one dollar, as far as I know. So you know that's a very hard game to play right there. Where's where where where? Let me ask you a question on another subject, way off into the distance, far away from this. Cool, cool, cool. cool. All right, so if we called someone yellow. What are we referring to them as? Well, you know, old school yellow would be cowardice. Absolutely. Yeah. I asked someone that uh, a couple of days ago, and they said Asian. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's that's different. <laughs> but see, also the yellow insult goes further back than the Asian. Uh, I believe, I think it's older than calling because I don't think Asian people have been called yellow longer than yellow mean coward. Coward, no, never. Not as far as I know. I think way back in the 1600s or something like that, they were calling yellow, people yellow. Yellow, 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 yellow belly chickens and shit like that. Yeah, yeah so I asked someone that and they told me uh, you're referring to an Asian person. Right. And I was like, no, not at all. I am not talking about Asian people at all. That never entered my head when I called someone yellow. Right. Ain't that amazing how that worked? I think that it's one of those things where like the overall uh, perception of things, words, words evolve. You know what I'm saying? Euphemisms definitely evolve. Like the things that we consider, like think about it like this, we don't, Think about words that we use in the 80s that we don't use anymore or we don't use in the same way no more. Mm-hmm. Like me and you probably still use them, but people of our ilk st- still use it, but very, people, very few people use words like whack. You know what I'm saying? Very few people use terms like dope anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's even worse in terms from the 90s. Like, so these terms and phrases kind of get redefined and they start taking on a different life because it's just this how uh, the lexicon evolves. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's one of those things. Yeah, I was sitting there and we were having a discussion. He was like, no, you're referring to someone as Asian. I was like, no, not at all. Um, yeah. I never I never took the Everybody. time. Yeah. I, not, and I can't say never because I have, I have heard, you know, when you're listening to the TV and they're calling Asian people yellow and things like that. Oh, those are the yellow people. Um, Indians or Native Americans are orange and shit like that or red or whatever and black people are black but they got like different hues of brown and shit like that. And they call Latinos brown people. Yeah. But for, for me, I was trying to, trying to tell them like that's the difference of where a color comes into play and then it goes wrong because people look at those things and they assess them the wrong way. And when I look at color specifically, I don't look at it towards people. You know what the difference is, bro? The reason why that doesn't resonate or it doesn't sit 
the same way is because we're the only ones, us and white people are the only two that actually accepted a color. We didn't, we, we were assigned a color and we just took it. But it's fool's gold though. Yeah, we like, if you think about it, like right now, like black people, we, you know what I'm saying? We get offended, you know what I'm saying? If you call us anything but black. Yeah, motherfuckers don't like African-American. And that, that, that term is only what, 40, 50 years old? Jackson came up with that. Jesse Jackson. Yeah. So it's like, we don't have, like our, our, our ethnic identity, we assign our ethnic identity based on what other people's uh, assignment is for us. So we don't really have ownership. You know what I'm saying? Asian people refuse, like we, we can call them yellow every day, but you don't hear them saying, man, protect uh, yellow lives matter. You don't see that shit? Protect yellow people. Yeah, none of that shit. Ain't they don't yet. say yellow eyes matter. You don't hear no bullshit like that floating around. They tell your ass, I'm from Korea, Korea, China, China. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. from Japan. Like they tell you where they from. They don't, they don't refer to themselves as fucking yellow. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same thing like with Latinos. Like there's very few Latino people who, who accept the color. There are a lot of Americanized Latino people who accept a color, but that as a universal rule, those are the ones you got to be careful about. There you go. You know what I'm saying? It's like the indoctrination thing. It's the whole process of indoctrination that. And I'll say this before you go further. I'll say this from taking the time to do boxing and traveling. Mm -hmm. When I went to Mexico and we had fights over there, the crowd applauded us, whether we were good or bad or indifferent. They applauded us. You know who they were rooting for? They were rooting for their guy, right? They're rooting for Mexico. But when you got done, whether you won or lost, they applauded you for the effort that you put up. Here in America, it seems mm -hmm. that Mexican Americans, when they get their opportunity, they boo the fuck out of you. And they make sure that you hear the words pinche mayate or whatever it is that they have to say to make sure that they degrade you and they talk dirty about you. Yeah, because they like, dude, they, they what it is, man, it's like, it's it, it's learned behavior. It's one of those things where Absolutely. it's like, it's a, it's a thing where it's like, uh, the best way to kind of like keep the underdog down is the dog pile. Them. You know what I'm saying? And I can think about when, when there was a, when it was school fights and everybody crowding around you know what I'm saying? Everybody's crying around. Nobody, nobody care about who win. All they care about is the fight. And then all of a sudden, when somebody gets jumped, then all you know what I'm saying, you got the core people that's involved, you got the people that's associated that jumps in, and then you got people who ain't got nothing to do with it joining the fight. You know what I'm saying? That's what is that's what America's looking like. It's like people who ain't got nothing to do with this fight. No, like first of all, we we what we fighting about is really truly irrelevant to what we exist, what was it truly existing in our lives right now, but we're still fighting over shit that, you know what I'm saying, over unresolved shit. The people that actually start the fight ain't even in the fight. No more. And these would be some of the same fucking Mexican Americans that can't even tell you or don't even know that the first president of Mexico was a black man. Dude, they're, they, they, like, they, they act Stupid like- Stupid motherfuckers. They, these are the same ones who don't act like Mexico City don't have statues of black people up. The first people to free themselves from slavery in Mexico. Bruh, they act like Mexico didn't help black people escape from the, the situation, slavery that was going on here. And they also act like during those same periods when they cross over to America from Mexico that they weren't the same motherfuckers getting hung because their skin complexion was your color or my color or darker, and they were getting called niggas too. Facts. Facts. Somebody ain't teaching their kids the, the correct history, man, or it's falling off the bandwagon because these motherfuckers come to America and they start all of a sudden they develop this sense of uh, I forgot what is what it's called. Say what? Self superiority and shit. Yeah, superiority where you feel oh yeah fuck fuck black people too. No motherfucker, you in the same boat. They want to join the dog pile. They want to join the dog pile. They want to be in the good graces of these 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 ignorant ass modern white people man and and then these are the same mexican americans because i can't call you mexican same mexican americans that get here and put on their application that they white they're not latino they put white that's good identity racial identity is lost 
That's why I'm very, I'm, I'm very adamant about maintaining our ethnic image. A lot of people don't get that. They don't understand what that means, bro. We got to maintain our ethnic image because I don't even know if it's like, I feel like our ethnic image is way more important than our American, our, our like where, the way our racial identity exists in America. Our ethnic image is, is, is the root of the tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so like, and I feel like our racial identity is really based on other people's perception of us. So if we can maintain our ethnic image, then our racial identity is already protected. If we're so focused on our racial identity, first of all, we don't even know who we are ethnically and our race come on now that's some shit somebody else made up you do what i'm saying so let's let's protect our ethnic image so that our racial identity is, is protected and owned by us instead of owned by the the, the you know what I'm saying the mass media and that makes you know what I'm saying latinos are, are 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 victims of the same shit but they don't they don't see it because they don't have they don't have the same uh historical background that we have dealing with this shit no they don't have the clarity I was talking to someone, I talked to plenty of people, well, not plenty, I just, I just can't say plenty, but I talked to several people about uh, Puerto Rico. And I was like, do you know that it's not Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico just means rich port. Like, y'all are Taino. Like, that's that's y'all. Oh, yeah. man, we don't even like to talk about that, man. Why you got to bring that up? Because that's who y'all are. Like, y'all aren't know who rich they are. port. Like, that's, they are. Puerto Rico just means rich port. Right. It's a, it was a, it was a, Port where that where trade where they would come in, you know what I'm saying? Trade goods and slaves. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Rum and anything else that they could get their hands on, women, whatever it was. But y'all accepting that. And it's uh, I get it. Like you accepting where you're from. That's your island. I get it. I've been there several times. I love it. It's it's beautiful. Dude, minus they, minus the hurricanes. They are they are the 51st state that it's the 51st bastard state. They get to vote. They get to participate in all this political shit, but they don't get any, any of the political benefits. You get no political benefits or rights. The president of the United States of, the, of America at the time, when you all were dealing with hurricanes and earthquakes, said he was going to Puerto Rico to talk to the president of Puerto Rico and had no realization that he was a president of Puerto Rico. Your motherfucker showed up and he was... He was shooting alley oop and poor alley oop and uh, paper towel to the public. Free throws and paper towels at the people and shit. <laughs> he didn't realize that he's their their president. <laughs> yeah, man. And you had people standing in line smiling like it was okay for him to do that. Say, like, okay, so y'all are less even less informed than he is. I'm telling you, willful ignorance, bro. It's like when it's 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 something that's passed down, though. It's like a it's a, it's one of those scenarios where. It's one of those scenarios where you kind of like you set the momentum, you set the pace, you establish momentum, and you just let the shit rock. And that's what's that's what's been happening. What's the quote? I think it goes: "Ignorance we can fix, but stupidity is forever." Or stupidity we can fix, ignorance is forever. Stupidity. I think stupidity is what I think that's what I think it's the stupidity that because ignorance, ignorance is individual. Yeah, ignorance is just based on the fact that you ignore, it. like you don't know it. Actually, but, you're actually not paying attention. Stupidity you can educate people out of. You know what I'm saying? But a person that's ignorant doesn't want to learn. You Ladies know? and gentlemen, I'm trying to find the quote right now. Bear with me as I try to find this shit, but I just want to make sure we get it right and we say it so you all can hear it, know it, and know what you're looking for when you, if, if you're listening to what we're saying. That's all. Stupid is forever. Ignorance can be fixed by Don Wood. That is the quote. That's different. Stupid is forever. Ignorance can be fixed. I feel like it goes further back than 2010, though, because I heard it back when in like 2000, 99 and 2000. <coughs> That's when I first heard it. So I think I forgot how it goes, but it, put it, yeah, whatever way y'all put it together, a lot of this shit can be you, you you can lift people up out of it it's just the amount of people that want to be and the people that don't want to be lifted up out of ignorance or stupidity those are the people that you know as devils don't matter what color they are what race they are what nationality ethnicity or culture they are if you choose to be stupid 
on your own after I give you the information, if I, after I tell you two plus two is four, and you tell me it's 4.5 or 5.6, you plan on being stupid. You want to be stupid. You want to be willfully ignorant. And that's on you. And I can't do nothing about that. Blocking out all the information that could potentially save your life, but you're, cho you're choosing the path of ignorance. You're choosing it. No one's making you do it. You're choosing it. And that says a lot about you. And for people who have people around them like that, leave them people to the fuck alone, man. Those people are bad for you. They're negative. That's why, uh, that's why I say like, man, I kind of like, I kind of steer clear of like the victim Olympic shit. You know what I'm saying? I try not to get caught up in a whole, like I, th there's, there's a whole lot of, of, of shit we need to do. We got a lot of housekeeping to do in, as, as a black community, right? Mm -hmm. I watch a lot of people share all of this information. Here it is, 2022 right now. And then people still sharing uh, all these links about it. Hey, Section 8 got these houses, you know what I'm saying? Got this, got the uh, application thing open or blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? All these different things to kind of like keep you, keep you uh, contained. And I don't say nothing because if you know, you know. If you want to know, you'll know. And uh, I see so many people, girl, put me on to that or you know what I'm saying motherfuckers who don't it's like it's a it's a habitual thing bro it's like we can we can you can actually do so much better if all you do is apply yourself you can break free from all the shit that's actually uh challenging you or yeah I'm gonna use that phrase it, things that are challenging you things that are actually pushing you pushing back against what it is your momentum is trying to drive you to go to so like something that's going to slow you down. I feel like any the people that truly need public aid truly need public aid. But there's so many people, bro, that are like on this system that don't realize they don't need it. They just on it because it's available. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it prevents them from actually being creative in their own problem solving and, and creating solutions. You see what I'm saying? But a lot of them have also been on, they they have been generationally, that's been passed down to them, right? The whole, look, you take the public aid and you live off of it and you stay here and you ain't got to do this and a third. The government take care of you. you know yeah, you don't let the government be your daddy. You don't let the government be your God. And because of that, you keep yourself from making your way out of it and let other people get in who need, who need the same amount of time right. to get themselves out. Like, Take the aid and use it as a means and method to get yourself into a better situation. Yeah, Don't exactly. stay there. Exactly. But so many people, that's how we ended up with generations of people in the project, bro. We ain't talking like one or two, we're talking three, four generations of people that was in the project. Yeah. We motherfuckers had to say, you know what, the only way we're going to get these niggas out of here is if we tear this shit down. That was the only way. How else was you going to get them out of there? And, and nobody, it never even occurred. It never even like it never even like became like a con a conscious thought that hey, maybe we could do better if we actually just got the fuck up out of here. This situation is this is not humane. This doesn't look right. And, and I said this on another episode. I, I told a couple of them like yo, why don't y'all just work y'all job that y'all been working and take some of that money and put it into a bank account so y'all can save up for a piece of property. Or a home, and then y'all just move into that, or move into one of those. What was it at the time? Rent to to own one of those rent to own properties, yeah. and then y'all would be good. Bro, Section Eight is not villainous. I will say that, but I was I, I, I will preface this statement with that by saying that a lot of people don't know that the Section Eight program also has a system in place where to help. Uh, new homeowners buy a property but they most people don't know that mm. the system isn't just designed to get you cheap rent it's to help you kind of like become a little bit more uh self-sufficient you know what i'm saying i even go as far as saying like we know like we watched 2020 come 2020 go all those people who took out them ppp loans ended up getting sued by you know what i'm saying they got hit with fraud cases and stuff like that because they don't understand how setting up what setting up an LLC actually means shit like that. They don't know that by creating a business, by starting a business, you're, you're creating an entire new entity and that's not your money. That money is the entity's money. You see what I'm saying? You, you are the, you're the, uh, the proxy for the, the entity. When you start a business, 
that that ELN number is a social security number for that business. For the business. All you did was take out money to make sure that that business was successful. They loaned you that money. The same way they would give you a home for it. That money was just a loan to make sure that you could pay that pay that money back off in the long run. So that if you started the business, somewhere down the line, if it was ten dollars or $15,000, you could slowly pay it off by doing whatever you need to do for your business. And a lot of people took that money and went and bought furs and all this Louis, Louis Vuitton and Gucci. All these designers that don't give a fuck about y'all. Y'all be out here wearing this shit for nothing. Dude, they was buying shit for self. They weren't in, they could have literally, you had the, you already got the ball rolling. You, if, if they actually legitimately started a business, they had the ball rolling and they were moving just by, by virtue of starting this business and getting that loan, they could have changed their lives for the better. For they could have changed, they could have changed three or four people's lives with that money. And all they, they had didn't have a, have a business plan, but instead they were short-sighted and they were thinking about flexing, thinking about vacations. But see, that's what happened when you live in like poverty stricken environments where you, instead of thinking about ways to get out and actually stay out, you're just thinking about ways to kind of like band-aid the pain. You know what I'm saying? It's like, not, let me not, subdue this. Let me subdue the feeling that I'm going through right now. Exactly. Let me instead of, instead of bettering the position I'm in right now. Instead of thinking about legacy and longevity. You know what I'm saying? They're just thinking about. I never touched that PPP uh, money, but I, I I was thinking about it for a while. I was like, man, I could throw it into the podcast, do this, that, and the third, yada, 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 yada. Literally, you could literally make this podcast a branding business by yourself. By yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying you could, if you could, if you could monetize it, and that's the whole thing. That's a, something like a lot of people don't realize. Like this right here. That's why I was asking you about the whole uh, YouTube visuals thing, because monetizing it on that would be so simple and easy. Because all you have to do is like just get a what two to five thousand viewers to more subscribe. than that, more than that, get some subscribers in there yeah. and do maybe like uh, one live stream a week and self monetize when they start seeing the potential for the self monetization, the rest of it just starts to take over a life on its own. Because the self monetization makes them have a piece of it. You know what I'm saying? Your self monetization is all you. Yeah. You know and saying? then going live is the thing that brings you in more. It brings you in more business as well. Yeah. Because, see, you don't, you don't have to worry about uh, AdSense. You don't have to worry about the YouTube ad system because people are actively, you know what I'm saying, subscribing yeah, that in real time versus coming in and check out your pre recorded shit. Yeah, they jump it on as soon as I go live. They jump in and see what I'm doing and see what I'm talking about. And if they like it, they share it with other people. So yeah. um, that was something that we definitely needed to talk about. I don't think we talked about it as much, but it was just one of those things. I was just like, look, I, I'm not trying to be like a celebrity or anything like the, it's, it's all about the information and, and inspiration. Making money off it would be, would be fine. It's just about doing it the correct way. That the money is always should always be the afterthought because I feel like anything that's going to be progressively successful and if if it's a resource, what which if you provide as a resource to people, people are gonna pay for it anyway. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to you just being out here being a snake oil salesman. You know and, and I'm not trying to be a snake oil sales, salesman. Conversations. I feel like if you're if you're in the business of having larger conversations and actually talking talking through things with people and just have, you know, so having these types of conversations we generally have, you'll get the types of outcomes you want. People pay to see that shit. People, people want to see it grow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, the link I sent you, the conversation where we, we talked about it in text. You know what I'm saying? That's all they did. You know what I'm saying? Them, them, they, they jumped off a whole network last year. Yeah. They started yeah. out one channel, two channels, and then now they got like five different channels all under one brand because they know that they, their team of people, which is just a group of people that all have conversations together. They said, well, how about we break these conversations down across the whole week as opposed to doing it on one night? Huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's something it's something worth looking into and doing, uh, pursuing. But like, like, you know, you know how I am about this. Like, I don't. It's your baby. It, and it's not just my baby, but it's just the fact that I don't want to do it. And then it only gets recognized for this one thing, this one specific thing that I'm doing. And then I have to continuously do that. And you already know how I feel about that. Like, I'm not with the bullshit. If it ain't real to me, 
I'm not going to sit there and do it. I'm not going to log on and do all this type of shit. I got boxers in the tuck. I got mm-hmm. a bunch of material in the tuck that ain't never came out that I haven't released. I got right. interviews that I recently re- released. You know, you understand what I'm saying? But it's all I'm about the- you release our conversations as frequently as you did, though, bro. Some of this shit need to be heard. Because you have a lot of shit. I'll be peeping. I know how you move. So <laughs> like, release the shit me and him talk about down there immediately. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Because some of the shit that we're talking about needs to be said. And we don't go, let me say that too. We don't take no real deep dives. We, we don't, we don't, to the people that are listening, we do not deep dive like we do when we're talking when we're when, when this these cameras are off. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like when we're sipping scotch. Or when we're sipping whiskey and we're sitting around chilling and it's either in person or it's like this, the conversations that y'all getting from me and Six is are nothing like what we do off of this mic, off of the off of the, off of the podcast. You're getting some of it, but you're not getting the brunt, like the full, the meat and potatoes. As a as a young lady once said to me, you're not getting the meat and potatoes or what it is we're talking about and how we try to go through life and the moves that we make. But you're getting some of the stuff that helps motivate, not motivate, but it gets your mind going, it gets your engine going, and it gets you thinking about a lot of things that, that's going that's on why, around you. That's why the last conversation with me, you, uh, Tony, with uh, with Creed, that shit was dope. That was Voltron, bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I felt like I talked too much on that one, but I was just so into it because y'all y'all had me lit. I was no, like, no, that, that's how I want it. That's how I want it. We ain't power out like this in a minute. <laughs> no, we haven't. But that's how I want it. And it was all in the realm of everything I wanted to be covered without me forcing it or bringing it up. Like it just happened. And the fact that you were talking about it, I was like, no, 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 let him cook. As long as he's cooking, as long as somebody's cooking, we good. Right. You know what I mean? But um, that came out. That, that I, think, I think that came out already. So. They come out today or yesterday. Whatever it is, I don't. It don't matter to me. You know, like I'm, I'm happy it came out. <laughs> word, you know, word. we got a chance. To, we got a chance to build and destroy. I, and, and that was a panel discussion. We were just talking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's why I'm I, talking. Bro. If, we, if like, I think we'll we'll talk about it off mic when we ain't on cam. You know what I'm saying? Not recording, whatever. But my idea, I, I you know, if I have an idea, I shoot it to you. We talk about it in text and shit like that. But I'm like, I had like these. Cause I see what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? This shit genius. <laughs> I think with the right structure though, mm-hmm. and you actually like create the right structure because you cover so many different conversations at any given moment of time. And you touch on so many different topics. I think our conversations are unique because we, you know what I'm saying? We do this. This is conversations we typically have anyway, but I'm watching how like conversations you have with the other guests, they kind of come off, they come off so fluid. And it'd be so vast that like from one person to the next that I can see it kind of like, it's not your typical conversation. It's like, I don't think people realize that black people think like this. Nope. They, they, I don't think they are aware that how, this is nope. how we actually function. Don't, 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 give it, don't, get, don't give them too much information <laughs> right now. Bro, don't we, give them too much info. Man, we, we next level, bro. Yeah. Yeah, but this was a whole point of doing it. And so, I remember like, and that this like this is one one of my main things. Like if I didn't have all the shit that I had going on in my life six six years ago, seven years ago, bro. Because you know I've been talking. We've been talking podcasts for years. Facts for yeah. maybe maybe five maybe five to seven years. We've been we've been talking about doing. And I said I was down with it, but and it was just something that never really materialized, especially for me because I had all the shit that I had going on or whatever. But you know what I'm saying. Be it as it may, you just ran with it. Mm-hmm. That's dope because I I you got the you got the brain for it. You know what I'm saying? You took you took the the initiative where I felt like I had a whole lot of shit on my plate, and that was just me kind of like excusing my own inability to actually uh, execute at the Let time. me say this though, because after you said yo, do a podcast, Jamie and Kenyon, what up, Pete? What up, peace and health and success to Jamie and Kenyon. They said. You should do a podcast. Telling you, bro. I looked it off. Man, whatever. No one wants to hear me talk. I, I, I'm boring. No one wants to hear somebody talk some smart shit, some brilliant shit or whatever it is. Blah, blah, blah. 
looked it off, didn't care nothing about it. We go to, we hang out, we're watching a fight. I think it's the Errol Spence, Marky, Mikey Garcia fight. We watching a fight. They bring it up again. Like, did you start the podcast yet? I'm like, man, don't, don't nobody want to hear that bullshit, man. You in between that, you still talking like, yo, oh, we should do a podcast. Like, niggas don't want to hear, hear us talk, man. They, they don't want to hear that. They want to hear nigga, 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 you know, kill, 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 murder, 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 death, 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 187, 211. They want to hear that. And then right before the pandemic started, I said, let me get on here and see what it is that a podcast take real, real quick. And I looked at Joe Rogan mm -hmm. and I was like, OK, I like what Joe Rogan is doing. And then I seen a guest that he had on it. It was a lot of his friends and it built up to like the MMA guys and a lot of that. I was like, oh, this Joe Rogan podcast is dope. Mm -hmm. And then you sent me and I told you about Joe Rogan. And you was like, yo, check, check out Joe Button. So I go to check, check out Joe Button. I'm like, all right, cool. You got a decent podcast. It should be decent. And I'm watching it. Then I, you then you was like, yo, check out Tax Stone. And I go from one podcast to the other, one podcast to the other, from the other to the other. And I started noticing things that I wanted to do and things that I didn't want to want, want to do. Yep. Right. So then for me, it was like, all right, so what are we talking about? Are we talking about podcasts or shows? Because these guys are using cameras. Which makes it a video. It's not a podcast anymore. It's a vodcast, whatever they're calling it. But a podcast is just an audio, which is what I want to do. I think that was the thing that kind of like really at that time, because think about how early on that was, because podcasts hadn't really popped off for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It was like success wasn't success was like anybody who was already in the in the motion of executing and actually doing it, they knew what their plan was. Like Joe Budden, for for all intents and purposes, when it comes like he took the template that uh Taxon and uh a few others before him actually laid out and he he did something great with it by getting that Spotify deal, right? Nobody expected to see that because his his, his shit was grassroots as fuck, bro. Like, nigga yeah, but give Joe Budden credit because he wasn't taking no ad money. You know what I'm saying? It was all finance out of his pocket. Like, yeah, did he fumble the bag a couple of times? Yeah, but guess what? This nigga's still here and he's a force in the game. Yeah, but give him credit too because he was recording all his dealings with Tahiri and all that in the crib, so. The podcast ever started, yeah. He was early on in the game, man. Joe had some some stitch, some stitches and some hair in the game already. Like he was already providing content. He understood, he understood the 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 potential impact of what the internet had available. And I feel like um because of that, it kind of like inspired a lot of people behind him. You know what I'm saying? Like Combat Jack, the father of black podcasting, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Before he passed. He was pretty much the the inspiration behind Joe actually just going ahead and and micing up and actually, you know what I'm saying, holding the conversations that he holds. R.I.P. Uh, Combat Jack. Absolutely. Salute. You know what I'm saying? Tax on took that shit and and did what well, I I used to love listening to Tax dude. I was, just because it was it was like I could relate to like the the ground level type of dude he was and the type of interviews he he was like he would be raw. If he ain't agree with you, he, he wasn't gonna sit there and 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 be politically correct and none of that shit. And that's fine because that makes for good conversation. Yeah. And, Cause you get past all the filter and filler bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. And then like Joe Rogan, the way he conducts interviews and, and conversations, he never lets go of the steering wheel. He never lets go of the steering wheel. He he directs every conversation in a way where it almost seems organic, but you can tell he's really he's a, he's conducting a whole orchestra. Know what I'm saying? Like he'll say things just he'll he'll say an idea, he'll say something just to see what the response is going to be, and then he'll let that become the, the next topic of conversation. He'll be like, "Yeah, uh, I heard they use uh, cat meat and McDonald's burgers," and then the person will say something and then crack a joke on it, or they'll they'll kind of lean into it, like, "Yeah, I heard that too," and he'll be like, "Yeah, let's talk about that." He'll, you know what I'm saying? And then before you know it, they're going another 20 minutes over some conspiracy theory shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. real, it's a random conversation shit. It's like really just, I think what it is, a lot of people aren't conversationalists, so they don't really get it. I'm a people watcher. You know what I'm saying? I learn a lot from like watching people. I can, I can. I am an observationist. I am observant. I, I uh, 
I don't like small talk, but I know how to because it's a skill set you got to have. And it is a skill set, but it becomes irritating for me after a while. So when you're conducting conversations and interviews, most conversations you have just in, in general aren't necessarily interesting. You know what I'm saying? What makes the conversation generally interesting is whether or not the person you're talking to is likable. You see what I'm saying? Like if you if you if you're having a conversation with somebody you really don't like, you're trying to cut it short. But if it's somebody you really fuck with, you you'll talk about damn near anything because you like the you like the exchange, you like the ideas, you like yeah. where the conversation may go. So like whatever the tipping point is for that conversation, don't even fucking matter. It's about where it's headed. You know what I'm I've saying? had conversations with people on here, man, that that ain't ain't worth the goddamn. Yeah. They are not with the conversation ain't worth the goddamn. And I haven't put some of those conversations out. Some of them have come out just because I was able to stay in the gap, you know what I mean, and make that work. But with right. certain people, you you just it, it's just certain people out there, man. No matter how hard you try, you you just can't make a conversation work. There are people that say they want to talk, they have so much to say, and then when they get on the mic, they don't have a goddamn thing to say. And it's just kind of like, well, why are you wasting your time and mine? Yeah, real shit. And then from there, you just have to say, all right, cool. Let me direct this conversation and let me keep it going for the next 30 to 45 minutes. And then we'll get out of here and we and I'll get out your way and I won't say nothing else to you about it. You know what I mean? And you, we'll never hear about the conversation because I won't put it out. I won't say nothing else about it. You know, I won't even tell nobody about it. But it, there, there are people there are people out there like that. Like when you're trying to have a, a full, like a dialogue, a symposium with them, like they they drop they drop the bag and I think I don't know if it's the camera that's in their own face like it's your camera I don't know if it's the camera or the fact that they think the once they start having a conversation with me they don't feel they don't feel comfortable anymore like they awkward, I guess it gets awkward for them but when you tell me shit like I got a lot to say and I want to speak for this and I want to speak for that and then you get on here and you don't say nothing it's kind of like well what what are you doing yeah, I but I do I like it now like I've been doing it since. I don't know when, 2001, October. So I've been, I've been, no, 2000. So we going on, we did a year already, you know, um, and we're going to keep on going. You're going to be on the guest, uh, guest on here more and more and more. And we're going to keep on going. I'm going to have more boxes, God, God willing. I got some in the tub. I got some that didn't go the way I thought they would go. Um, there are certain boxes who have said things that they don't want to come out. And they think when I release the podcast, I'm going to put out all the bad stuff. So, you know, they're, they're, those are podcasts that, 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 that have never see the light of day just because of my integrity, not because I'm a piece of shit and I'm an asshole and I want people to know what you said and, and behind behind closed doors because I ain't the type of dude I am. I want your word to be true. The, the main focus is on what we wanted to talk about. Anything extra and you tell me, yo, don't put that out. I'm not going to put that out. I'm not going to put that out. But um there are episodes that are, are that are, that 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 may be released. I got episodes that to come and everything. And I'm appreciative of every person, every individual, every artist, every boxer, every uh, teacher, every guidance counselor, every judge, attorney, uh, NBA player, basketball player, football player, softball player, whoever it is that's come that comes on here, man. I'm, I'm super appreciative of the opportunities that they give me to tell their story and, and be inspiring and have good conversation because. A lot of stuff that we see in the media isn't based on what on, on how we actually carry ourselves and conduct ourselves in a regular everyday setting. We don't always sit around and talk about drugs. We don't always sit around and talk about uh, music. We, we talk about other things. We talk about money, finance, uh, our, our, our doing better for our communities, our kids. We talk about a lot of other things other than that. And I don't hear that a lot of the times when I, when I listen to these podcasts or the news or anything like that. Um, so I, I definitely appreciate the opportunity that people give me to interview them, to talk and open up and tell their story, because it's all about documenting truth and bringing truth to light and, and power to the light as well. So that's that. I think a big thing that uh, my my favorite thing about these types of conversations and like I guess a role that I like to play, because I always kind of like been like big brother to a lot of people and kind of like I'm always a solutions based type person. So like when I'm exam examining, you know, like pre-existing issues or just issues in general, I kind of like to examine like the the potential outcome of resolving those issues as opposed to like uh, leaning into like where people like to complain, if that makes any sense. 
like a lot of people, like a lot of people will beat a dead horse when it comes to like talking about uh, what what they feel like are the the big problems that are holding us back or whatever. I don't feel like shit is holding me back, but my own my own stubbornness. It's about the effort. Yeah. So it's about the like, effort. And and I get it. The whole you know oh you know it's systemic and all that. Like I hear, I hear that. But right now where you are right now, what can you do about your situation? Exactly. And then you also got to consider this, like where we are now, we are probably way more, we have more capability than we've ever had in the history of our time on this fucking continent. Tax plus tax. What are you going to do with it? Like, are you going to complain and keep on pointing the finger at the system? Because honestly, you keep inviting the system into your life, you're going to have these problems. That's what go back to what I was saying about the whole section eight thing and about the public health, public aid thing. Like, yeah, it's a good tool in terms of like getting, getting shit going. But when you, when you make that, you know what I'm saying? The foundation for, for your family moving forward, you got this, it's all, ain't nothing but else to take on that. Yep. All you do, all you do is produce more hangups for yourself to deal with in the process of you being successful. And then your mind starts to tell you that there's no way that you can do that because of all these different hangups. So you put fear in front of your actual goals and the possibility of you doing well without you ever actually accumulating any type of success. And is that that shouldn't be the way that you want to live. The way that you want to live is without fear. You want to live and be able to do the shit that you want to do. Why would you want to give yourself fear? Why would you do that to yourself? False evidence appearing real. That's what fear is. If you sit there and you harp on fear all the time, fear ain't nothing but the fact that you never did it before, especially if you haven't. If you never jumped out of a plane or if you never dunked the ball or if you never bowled a, a, a 120 game or anything like that, that's all that shit really is. It's your mind telling you, you can't do it. So you right. have to tell your mind, like, yo, the focus is to do it. Let me ask you a question. I just want to get your, your take on this because what you're saying is very poignant and it makes a big difference in terms of like the, like where we're headed as a, as a people. And I'm just talking for us as black people. We have like fractured homes. I think we're doing greater than a lot of, uh, uh, nationalities and, and ethnic groups in terms of like actually trying to turn it around. Uh, but think about it like this, you work in corporate spaces, you see like what the, what, what the stress levels look like for people who actually make the big decisions and shit like that. You think about like with lawyers, uh, doctors, those are stressful jobs, right? There's a lot of people who become doctors. Hold on. A lot of people become doctors at the uh at the behest of their families like so you got a lot of immigrants who come over here become doctors not because they want to be doctors but because their families kind of push them into those those lanes of work and it's a lot of money there you know what i'm saying but just because you make a lot of money don't mean you're going to be uh good at what you do you're going to be content with what or happy you know what i'm saying and uh so with all that being said it's like so we take let's let's like strip away all the veneer of like all the things that we have uh, on our plate as a people, right? Uh, I think our perception of how we measure success has always been skewed, especially for our uh, women. So like when it comes to like the the money, like a lot of women, I, I came, I come across so many chicks who like always talk about how um, they got their own money and they, you know what I'm saying? They, they get in the bag and blah, 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 especially the ones who work in like corporate spaces. But then they also complain about how uh, they don't get the type of respect that they feel like they deserve on the job. And I, had, I, I often wonder like, do they realize that the dudes that work them same jobs are miserable? Ain't nobody in them fields of work happy just because they make a lot of money. Um, a lot of them are just doing it because it's- It it's, makes money. Yeah, and it's expected of them to make the money. They're they're you know what I'm saying the breadwinner or whatever or whatever. So like and also like just on a on a genetic level, because we're talking thousands and thousands of years of conditioning versus like the last hundred years or whatever the fuck civilization we think we have. Women have only been able to actually participate in less than 40 of those years, right? At the scale that they've been able to participate at why is it that people don't really understand that women have like a predisposition to anxiety because of survival? You see what I'm saying? Like, if you think about it, because we got to be the hunter gatherers, we may or may not make it home. It's like, I'm talking thousands of years ago. We may or may not make it back. You're talking about 50, 50 to 60,000 years ago, or maybe even a hundred thousand years ago, where we went out hunter hunting and gathering food gathering. with the expectation where, I may not make it back home because there may be a saber tooth tiger or a woolly mammoth that may either crush me or, or kill me. Yeah. So you think 
so now you enter this space where because we've one thing has that has never changed is like our general role in in, in society you know what i'm saying yeah we we've had some challenges in terms of like uh natural events and stuff like that but the general idea is that a man is supposed to go and go out and get it women want to participate too all right cool get out here and let's go get this together right however when you think about like where we are, where we stand right now as a society though, like the, the idea is like, you get up here in these, these uh, high stress jobs, making life or death decisions or making, uh, you know what I'm saying? You're a heart surgeon, you're making life or, life or death decisions. You're a brain surgeon, you're making life or death decisions. Mm -hmm. Male or female, you're making life or death decisions. And then you gotta come home and provide for potentially a family if you got one, you know what I'm saying? And pay these bills and maintain the lifestyle to keep these people that you, you're responsible for comfortable and then you on the flip side of that you got like women who have the opportunity now to participate in these same fields and they're not necessarily uh i guess they don't have the same uh mental uh the, the same mental dexterity that we have in terms of like compartmentalizing and able to deal with the stresses you know what i'm saying like there's no there's not a lawyer who who, who doesn't think that he may or may not be able to do this too much longer. There's not a, you know what I'm saying? There's not a lot of per, uh, uh, high level politicians who don't feel like, damn, I don't think I could do this much longer. That's why there's a lot of corruption in a lot of these businesses and fields because a lot of them start just making bad decisions because they're doubting their ability to do this any longer. And, and confidence is a very big part of anything that you do. Even when you wake up in the morning and walk out the house, you have to be confident. That can be shaken because you're not always the biggest dog in the yard. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, you but if you if you a nigga like me, that don't that don't never mean nothing to you. Like, you could be great at what you do, and you can execute at the highest level that you're capable of. But somebody can always come along. Like, you're not. We don't need you no more. And those per those people that make those decisions are are moving to preserve themselves. And that's all it is usually in those opportunities. So when you have women in these same spaces who want to be the CEO or they want to be the COO or they want to be the partner or you see what I'm saying? A lot of the times it kind of like convolutes the whole, the, 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 the reason why men absorb all of that stress. And, and it's not to speak negative on women because to salute to salute to all the women I know that are lawyers and doctors. Hey, hi, hi, how, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing well, but I noticed in certain ones of them, no different from men, they have high stress levels and high anxiety levels that keep them from performing at the proper level on the job. I think a lot of that comes from them not being able to compartmentalize their feelings or the job itself. Kind of like conditioned at a young age. To, kind to of do that. Yeah. We're, ta we're taught to do that. Yeah. We're yeah. taught to do that, whether we realize it or not, like it just happens for us. So we don't, we don't enter spaces. We literally do not enter spaces expecting anything from anybody. No. You see what I'm saying? Any space that I've been in has been like, young man, go get it. Go get it. Show and prove to these motherfuckers that you can do it. Why is this not done? If you if you're held accountable, you see what I'm saying? Or if you fail, you have you're you're responsible for fixing your fuck up. Not just fixing the fuck up, but answering for it in, a, in front of a group of people who are looking at you and what you did. Yeah, taking accountability. So that's what I'm saying, like moving forward as a society, though, because we once the cat's out the bag, ain't no putting it back in. You know what I'm saying? Where we are right now, moving forward as a society, I think it's very important that we kind of like. We kind of like not necessarily push against the idea that maybe we all kind of like need to have these conversations amongst each other, men and women, mm -hmm. you know, because the only way we're going to thrive there, like I said, there's no putting this cat back in the bag. We all, it's already out. It's we, out. Everybody's talking about everything now. Yeah. So it's like, like the things that you're like, I'll even say like, I'll use music as an example. There's a lot of dope female rappers, right? most of them will probably never get the shine they deserve because hip hop has always been, for the most part, a male dominated space. And uh, I'll say Rhapsody, I can listen to Rhapsody, you know what I'm saying? But there's a part of my brain that just won't listen to a lot of the stuff she's talking about because of relatability, right? Same thing with like the, 
the uh, Lauren Hills and Nicki Minaj. This Lauren, I, I fuck with Lauren Hill because of nostalgia more than anything. But I'm not sitting up here like, man, I can't wait for the next Lauren Hill single drop. But when she gonna get on another, do another feature? You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Whereas I'm a little bit more inclined to listen to like things that that's more relatable to me. So it usually come from male MCs or male singers or whatever. But if the conversation is not being had and we're not actually trying to like uplift and kind of help involve women in, the, in their own advancement in a way where it actually it's a it's not just a selfish benefit, if that makes any sense. Like, I think we're all like selfishly uh, motivated and that's never a good thing when it comes to like advancing society. When you have like this music thing that we, we all want to kind of sustain, hip hop is already slipping from our fucking grasp and the only way to really get it is to get everybody involved, but we're not including the women, but women help make the money. What are we doing? You they have, they have to be included. You got to involve them. But, but that- in the community bro it's the same thing in the community like all the money that's most of the money that's being spent in the black community come from women bro mm-hmm. Boy, come from trying to impress women why are we not trying to like outside of the fact that the whole the whole uh i don't need a man thing or men ain't shit niggas ain't shit blah 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 that's trash we if we could actually like if we could actually just sidestep that shit and really get to the real conversations we could actually have real conduct, you know what I'm saying? Real con- conversations that can actually promote solutions as opposed to talking about problems. Yeah, and conduct, get us to conduct business in a better manner as well. That's, that's really is where I'm going with it, man. It's like, I, that's that's the way my brain be working, bro. It's like, yeah. like the larger conversations aren't ever really being had. And I've seen like conversations or I've heard conversations where like they get super combative. I've seen conversations amongst men. I, we have conversations where we talk about shit that you might say something I don't necessarily agree with. I'm hearing you out because I want to see where you're going with it. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I see a lot of shit that you may or may not even agree with, but you're hearing me out. Because I want to know what you. I want to know where you are. I want to be informed. Exactly. And agreeability is not a, a prerequisite to solutions. You don't have to agree with everything to have a good conversation, bro. To ha- to learn something, dude. You think I went to? Uh, I don't agree with with half the shit I learned in school. But guess what? When I started applying what I learned. I started, I can pick it apart and I can make better decisions. I'm more informed. Information is just that. Truth is truth. Truth mm-hmm. doesn't require you to agree. You see what I'm saying? And I feel like the biggest lesson to take away is to for us to put our ego aside and, and learn to conduct these conversations in a more meaningful way. That's it. But you got to you gotta be around the type of people that want to do it because... You got to create those types of people too, though, man. Yeah, like, because certain people, man, you can get them in a room and sit them down and it's all going to be ego. It's all going to be, I want people to hear what I have to say, if nothing else. They don't, they don't care about strategy or solving a problem. They just want to be heard. Yeah. And Man. when you just want to be heard, then you're causing more problems than there needs to be. Especially when what you, what you have to say isn't necessarily uh, relevant to the, the topic at hand. Nope. Like, there's nothing wrong with having ideas. Ideas are great. Ideas move the world. But is it relevant to what the problem is at hand? Like if we're if we're fucking talking about uh, if we're talking about climate change and blah blah blah, but we know that we have a fucking uh, 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 twenty block long fucking meteorite coming towards Earth, a fucking comet coming towards Earth. Which one is our more important fucking issue? The comet. You know what I'm saying? And then honestly. Neither one of them is more important than the fact that we need to just kind of rectify whatever issues we have amongst each other because neither one of them, we ain't going to survive neither one of them. No, so, the, especially once the comic gets here. Yeah, that's a wrap for everything. Really bitching about. You see what I'm saying? That's how I view it like with this COVID shit, bro. It's like people are like so fucking lost in their emotions. They're not really looking at the bigger, the, the grand scheme of things. Mm-mm. And to anybody that's listening, happy new year, happy 2022. Uh, there are like five asteroids headed this way. In reality, and I'm not being I'm not being facetious or blowing some smoke. I'm telling y'all the truth. It's like five which, asteroids. We don't know which one <laughs> is really on a direct course and shit. And that's the whole thing. We never know. And the one that is allegedly headed this way is the size of Big Ben, the clock in uh in, in the UK. And that is enough to cause a lot of damage here on Earth. You could you could take out you could take out thousands of miles yeah you can take out half a country depending on where you put it where it drops cause a tsunami if it hit the right part of the oh ocean. yeah oh yeah and that's not to scare nobody but it's to let you know that 
a lot of the things that y'all bitching and complaining about mean nothing in the grand scheme of things, grand mm. scheme of things. Uh, I've said this over and over again, whether it be with me, Six, Agent Smith, Creed, um, or, or, or Big Bro Ken or anybody else. The things that we argue about and talk about sometimes are infinitesimal in the grand scheme of everything. An asteroid comes into our solar system and it's two, it's, it's two blocks long. We are in a lot of shit because when it touches down, that's a lot of impact and it has to go somewhere. And imagine this. What if like what? Because perception is everything, right? Mm. And our reality is shaped by what our senses is able to process, right? We don't even know it's a goddamn asteroid. It could be a goddamn alien spacecraft. <laughs> That's, it could be. It could be. NASA is aligning with a bunch of theologians from all these different religions to try to, to gauge what the what response they should expect if they were to announce uh, the potential of uh, contact with alien life. How do y'all, y'all don't even know how to talk to one another. How do y'all know how to talk to a, a, a extraterrestrial from somewhere else? That's the whole point, bro. That's and why, why would he want to speak to any of us anyway? We're bro. full of death. We're full of deception. We're full of deceit. We hurt everybody. We we're, do we're everybody fucking, wrong. We're primitive as fuck, dude. Super we're, primitive. We're not even a type one civilization. A type one civilization masters all of its energy from the planet itself. We have Yes, we haven't even learned how to do that. We haven't even learned how to use each other as a valuable resource and make each other better. So what makes you out to look? I just put a video out. If y'all want to check it out, it's on the YouTube, the Faux Prophets YouTube channel. The uh with me and six talking. It's called Primitive and Ghetto. We already discussed this. I'm not gonna even say anything. The ghetto is space right now, bro. We don't we, we the ghetto is space. Like this is it, we, we, it's a dirty, rotten place. We're a dirty, rotten group of people. We're we're, we're deceitful, we're we're sex raged and everything else, full of drugs and everything else. Yeah, all we want is pleasure. We're just pleasure and violence. That's it. Pleasure and violence. And we reproduce like fucking roaches. And we're still not reproducing enough. And the motherfuckers that ain't re- reproducing that are trying to do better for the planet. Y'all shun them for being who they are. You shun people like me for having thought and having a conversation that could actually be productive to your daily life. You shun a person like me. Help move you in the right direction. I'm trying to help you out. Yeah, people want to move the goalposts. You know what I'm saying? They want to like they want to deflect and change the conversation as opposed to like just have the real conversation. And I like sex too. I love pussy. I love it. It's a beautiful thing. You know, I, I look. I don't put up numbers, but you know, like you get to a point where that that that's that can only be self self gratifying for so long. You got to start looking at everything else around you. Like yo, how can I be better and make everybody else better around me? How can I make my life better financially? How can I make my my life better emotionally and spiritually? Like there are other things that matter outside of these small little things that we be focusing on. Yeah, I think like also, like people are so, people are so hung up on whether or not they're considered right. They don't even care whether or not what they're saying is valid. They just want to be right. You know what I'm saying? Listen, you don't have to be right. It don't even matter, right or valid. At some point, if it's wrong, someone's going to come along and correct you. They just want to be right. They want to be validated, man. And that's what's crazy to me. I feel like uh, in the larger scheme of things, like when you really start looking at things for what it is, um, the people that actually leave a mark, what their legacy is in life, it's really something that that changes the lives of others. There it is. As opposed to what they did for their own ego. You know what I'm saying? Nikola Tesla didn't do what he did for him. You know what I'm saying? That shit was for everybody. For everybody, bro. And uh, like, like the the screen that's in your microwave. You know what I'm saying? That on the glass is based on his design. You know what I'm saying? To help block out radiation. People don't even think about that. They buy microwaves every fucking day. They buy them for Christmas. They buy them for birthdays and shit like that. And they got them in their kitchens. Everybody. They, I don't know a home that don't have a fucking microwave. I probably, there might be some people who don't believe in using them, but think about it. This dude died, never got the full credit and he didn't die for credit. He just kept inventing, kept creating, kept inventing. And this is one person, you know what I'm saying? So you think about like all the different work that we need to be putting in now so we can be that 
that level of uh, advancement that we need on the individual and on a on a massive scale. We instead we want to just be famous. We want to we want to self serve. If you're listening, we don't give a fuck about being famous over here. Over here is about information. It's yeah. about sharing information and conversation. And hopefully we inspire you along the way. I don't care about being famous. If anything, the money matters a little bit more to me. And the money only matters only to a certain degree. Let me say that as well. Me and Six, Agent Smith, we have been through these record deals before. We've heard the conversations and we know what they sound like. The money means not as much, not as much, not as much. On the grand scale of what you're taking away, it don't mean as much. But this is being done to provide to provide a, a service of a different type. And I'm not going to even go into that. But maybe one day y'all will catch on and y'all will see it. Six caught on. And, and a few other people have caught on to it. And that's all that matters. That's yeah. all that matters. If this was about, listen, same way with music. If this was about getting money, I could have switched this up on y'all a long time ago. <laughs> I could have switched this up a long time ago. If you want me to, if you want me, if you want me to nigger it up, I could have been done that easily. Yeah. Y'all want me to see y'all want some nigger shit? <laughs> I got some episodes that I could release and y'all y'all will love it. This, I, I, this is about this is about you know what I'm saying long term outcomes. This ain't just about you know what I'm saying. If it was about me, I have this would be like this would be a podcast with naked bitches. <laughs> Listen, I can do that. I can be entertaining strippers and shit like that. I can do that. We can get them. I could, we could talk about how to get some pussy. Yeah. Oh man, what? Oh, <laughs> and, and what? Without even giving up my main things on, on how I do it. What? Right. What? Yeah. I can show y'all how to get some coon, some um poom poom. Like, that ain't nothing. Yeah. That ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. And, and, and the niggas just that's just telling y'all that they got it, that they getting it, and they paying for these bitches. They paying ten thousand dollars for a purse, twenty thousand dollars for a bag. The niggas is suckers, man. Suckers. <laughs> That's 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 sucker work, man. If you want to be if you want to be for real, like that's suck that's sucker shit. Nigga like paying that much for it, bucks. You go to the liquor store, get that same bottle for sixty bucks, but you just man. pay two hundred at the bar so you can entertain some bitches with some. You want some sparklers on your bottle? Yeah, <laughs> tripping, man. Y'all going in the club? The same bottle y'all paying for the in the club that's like four hundred dollars is fifty dollars at, at the motherfucking liquor store. Y'all yeah. going in there to, 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 to look like y'all are celebrities and shit. Y'all niggas is crazy, man. And, and let me say this too, because I was in the club. What you gonna buy me? What you gonna buy me? Aren't you gonna buy me? No, I ain't buying you shit. The fuck I, I look you. like? I don't even know you. Get out of my face. Fuck, <laughs> fuck you over here for. Motherfuckers being in, in a club spending that type of money just so they can look good. Just so they can think they feel good. Regular chicks. Just so you can go back home and be a regular ass nigga in, in a basement. Or some little bomb ass apartment, man. Come on, man. No, we ain't doing that. Well, even if you got you a flat, fly ass, flashy ass, high rise apartment on the front, on lakefront, nigga, why are you living like that though? Why you got to go out to the bar and do that? Who, who are these people you trying to entertain? But see, that's the that's the perception. That's when you live when you live in opulence, man. When you live, it's a difference in, in having an abundance mindset and then trying to live an opulent life because you're just living a fantasy. When you have an abundance mindset, it's completely different than having a, a mindset for opulence. My G's. Now you just live in fantasy. My G's. I, I lived in a high rise before. It, it was fun. I had fun. It was it was dope. L- listen to me. It was dope. I had a lot of fun. When you staying high above the city, and you know, and it get the winter time, the 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 building moves back and forth because of the wind. You know, Chicago wind is crazy. But I, I have fun. You know, I had a lot of women over there. You know, shit was going down. Motherfuckers was walking around, looking like it was a garden of Eden with me and 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 Hugh Hefner in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But Not that man, you know, we was in there doing a damn thing. But listen, man, a lot of the shit that y'all be saying that these guys be out here doing, telling you it ain't tricking if you got it. It is tricking if you got it, bro. Tricking if you got to go, okay, say it again. Tricking say it tricking. again. Okay, how you dress up? Tricking is tricking. And if that's your thing, that's your thing. But don't try to don't try to play it like it's don't try to downplay it like it's something that it ain't. You only fooling and lying to yourself. Yeah, you lying to yourself, and you think you lying to everybody else. When I know it's just a lack of self confidence in yourself that you can't do what I can do, and I'm not here doing what I do. 
and I'm not, you know, I'm not one to continue to gossip and, and spill tea like that. But you know, I see y'all out here, you know, but it's it's a way to do everything out here, you know what I mean? But to 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 the young men out here, man, don't let these guys fool y'all in the in these videos and all this shit thinking you got to have Bentleys and Maybachs to pull these girls and you got to be buying them all this stuff. The reason why these dudes do it is that because they can't do what me and six do and they can't do with me and a couple other guys. Well, I ain't gonna say nobody else's name. I'm done. I've been done for years and years and years. So y'all don't have nothing to worry about. But all, all, the, all the chicks that they be talking about, man, been there, done that. That ain't nothing. And ain't. the crazy part about it is those like all they're doing is setting up the they're, they're changing the evolutionary path. Because what they're doing is they're creating a false, a false ideal. You're 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 painting a picture that can't be sustained long term. You know what I'm saying? You can't keep that up forever. Yeah, and, and then you're like, making other women look bad too. And what it is is they're setting bullshit expectations for women because while they're doing is they're thinking that because you treated them so well, you you extend hyper extended yourself to provide a lifestyle for a chick who never lived that way before. So now the next nigga who come behind you, because you know you don't want to keep her around too long. So now she's looking for another nigga to help her sustain that high. That go back to the anxiety thing I was talking about, bro. Like they don't want to go back home to, to the hood. So what they want to do is go even harder they're gonna go even harder to try to find another man. hypergamy crazy bro they go even harder to try to get a man that's gonna take care of them and, and provide them financially again. yeah yeah uh -huh. and they don't understand that they become they become leeches and they yep. say they, oh you just you don't have it no bitch you go digging like you don't broke, just say that all that old shit right no but bitch you broke i got money <laughs> you good. broke you, i'm good <laughs> you trying to leech off me stupid i'm, I'm chilling you know what I'm I just wanted to. I just wanted to twat. <laughs> That's it. And, and then now you yeah, we have a good time for a few hours. Now you trying to live up in my shit. You trying to get knocked up and all that because you trying to because you don't have what I have. You know what I'm saying? You can't shame me into taking care of you. <laughs> Man, I got I got stories to tell, but um, we're not gonna do that on this episode. Maybe maybe never. Maybe never. Like, but don't, it's don't it's podcast ready, man. I think those conversations are just good to keep in the tuck. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this though: it's some it's some women out here, and the same way, same way, same way, women have no men that are just this is dirty. But I know some women out here that that tried, they were trying just just to get my seat, just to get my seat about me, straight up, and and they were trying their best, you know, to to finagle a plan and make it work, and it just didn't work, you know. To, to God, to God be the glory, to myself be the glory. But um it, it's some really it's some really nasty situations out here. And we could sit here and talk about that for another hour, but we're not gonna do ah, it's two hours. We can go on all night all night about that. I put some of the shit in songs. If y'all listening, if y'all listen to Pepe Le Pew, which is a classic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe that we've recorded that actually outlined. Hell, my last project talks about that shit. Red rooms are real. You know what I'm saying? Lonely girl. Man, diarrhea lust. I think I recorded a few few different versions of that, and all of it was different. It's just one of those things where, like, and I, it, I think that because of this, uh, these these unreasonable expectations that have been set, it kind of like it it draws a, a, a it draws a crazy narrative that. That people feel like they're entitled to what another person has. You know what I'm saying? Whereas the, that person who has it did so much to attain it, but they don't have nobody to really share it with. Because think about it, like if you really focus, like if you're hyper focused on your own personal uh, definition of success, there's a strong possibility that legacy is a part of it, but it's not the forefront. Because right now you're just trying to get your shit off. So, yeah, you and also outside of all that was external to all of that but was driving your humanity is the fact that you still have needs so you have sexual needs you know what i'm saying you're attracted to women and you have this lifestyle that you, you know what I'm saying you're juggling so many different things so now you're enter entertaining these women because of those sexual desires and sexual needs that you're not even thinking that damn this chick really just in this in this situation to try to trap me you know, it, you know, like you know it, but it's not the forefront of your mind because the, what's in the forefront of your mind is trying to get get to the bag, keep on mm -hmm. doing. You know what I'm saying? So 
Yeah, you have you keep her around for a little bit because you having fun with her, but the whole time she's just playing chameleon shit. She's just really just trying to keep keep herself in your good graces for as long as she can. Dudes do it too. You got homies that'll do that shit. They be staying in your good graces as long as they can. As long as they can. With no real intent. They just just holding on to your coattails long enough. Yep. Yep. And, and I'll say this too, and it's not to talk bad about women, but it's been a few few women that are uh, that were hanging on, just hanging on. Like, and I noticed not to be a piece of shit, but you notice when you start being a piece of shit, like, oh, you just oh, so you just gonna take that. Are you just gonna take you gonna let me talk to you like that for no reason? Okay, cool. Yeah. So I know you're along for the ride. Sometimes you got a shit test though. I feel like this. You are not doing your due diligence if you don't shit test people. And sometimes shit testing people is doing that. You see what I'm saying? You can't like I feel like having a big heart is the biggest is the the biggest downfall for a lot of people who who try to pursue success. If you don't if you don't have the heart to shit test people and really, you know what I'm saying, put their feet to the fire to see whether or not they're really genuine, then you're going to get you're going to get snaked. Mm -hmm. get snaked. Uh, you can't take care of everybody. Everybody ain't everybody's not going to be able to make it with you. Everybody who came with you ain't going to go with you. You know, so you know the euphemisms and shit like that. So you kind of got to like, you got to shit test people, man. Sometimes you got to be an asshole just to see whether or not they're aware that you know what they, what their intentions are. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Or you, you have some, some suspicions about their intentions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Good. ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Full Profits Podcast with my yeah. co-host 606. Sure. Yes, sir. We 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 did another one, bro. Yes, sir, man. What's the uh what's the tagline? Man, oh shit. Get it, bro. Uh, 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 uh. Remember the mission statement when you're striving for greatness. God never puts you in the driver's seat if it's taken. Yo, with that said, I will kill niggas dead. We out. Peace.